46 Raised up in the sticks Somewhere north Oh, there we go, 24 hours later, no dramas. I'm gonna get it sanded down now and paint it. I want three wet coats on top of what was there already to make that really nice and shiny like the swing arm is. That'll be fantastic, hopefully, if it goes that way. So wish me luck. Let's stop talking and get stuck in. All right, there we are. Now that's known as crazy. Welcome to the fun that is paintwork. Now this kind of thing happens very, very rarely. Now and again, you just can't avoid it. It's when one layer of paint reacts to another and it lifts it up. It makes that horrible cornflake sort of effect. I didn't see it straight away, just, just doing the intro just now. As soon as I started rubbing down, I could see it all. There isn't much of it, it's just mainly there, but it happened and now I've got to get past it. And I'm kind of happy in a way that it did because making these videos, you know, I'm trying to help you do these sort of things. I can't contrive that. I can't make that happen and then show you how to get past it because normally you'd want your paintwork to be perfect every time. And obviously today I got it wrong. I made a mistake. Sometimes it's foreign matter underneath. You haven't cleaned it properly. The surface underneath has got something on it like silicon or some oil or something. Or in this case, I believe it was because the tough black underneath wasn't quite cured. And the etch primer over the top, which is quite strong, quite a strong chemical in that. You can smell it. It's really, really acidic that's probably lifted up the, the not quite fully cured tough black. So I think that was where I made the mistake. Just didn't give the black long enough to dry. It did feel dry, it sanded back lovely, but just not enough. So all I've got to do to get past this, there's two options now. One, very, very carefully, just lay over it with very thin coats of black. Now it's all smooth, I've flattened it down. I'm gonna degrease it properly, really take care, ultra careful, preparing that, tack rag, the whole lot. And once it's done, then thin, thin coats, super thin dust coats, just mist them over it, try and introduce layers of chemicals back onto it and hopefully it will settle and it won't re-react. If it does, then I have to strip it off and start all over again, which is annoying because it's a waste of chemicals, a waste of paint materials, I mean, and it's a waste of time. So ultimately, wish me luck, I hope I can get past that. I'm gonna sand the other side down first, once the whole thing's prepared, then slowly, carefully start laying up some black and see if I can get away with that. <sighs> Welcome to paintwork, <laughs> the fun that is crazy. Okay, again, going 800 on this. I think that's what we need for the job. Give a lovely smooth finish. Foam block, nice squashy foam block. So it gives, but at the same time, just rubs the tops off and not the whole job. Lots of water. Right, time for a guide coat now, all sanded back. I can't feel any of it anymore. So fingers crossed, the guide coat will tell me if I've got all the gremlins out, if there's gonna be any more misbehavior, uh, and whether we get away with it. <laughs> Right, um, so I'm sharing this with you as much as I can. And again, this has been fortunate today because you can see what can sometimes happen and how to get over it. Looking at it, trying to ascertain what I've done wrong, looking what you've done wrong and what you need to do next time is 
the reaction's just limited to where the tough black was. This section of the frame at the front, which is just factory paint, absolutely no reaction at all. There was a little one last night, but it's gone down, and I think that was possibly a little bit of grease or something, but it seems to be fine now, flattened out beautifully. But the rest of it, all this crazing, was restricted purely to the tough black, which just tells me the mistake that I made was not leaving it long enough to cure. It was nothing to do with the finish, the surface, any contaminants or anything like that. So I've done everything I could except leave it long enough, which is always the way, drying times and all the rest of it. So anyway, tough paint, a really super thin coat, just a mist over it, and then stand back, fingers crossed, and wait. And hopefully it doesn't react again. If it does, then I've got to take it all off, which would be a real shame. Wish me luck. Right, that's a tack coat with 10 minutes under its belt and nothing so far. Let's go for a proper coat, a thin one. Right, as you can see, it's still visible. You can still see the little craze marks, but that's because the paint's thinnest there. I've been putting it on the thinnest in this section where it was the worst. Uh, up the top there, there was no reaction. So I'm just laying up a few coats on that and getting it nice and heavy. I think it's not reacting. It isn't re-reacting anymore. I think those little cracks just showing are just where it's settling into them. Because obviously when you sand it, you've got all those little craze marks, I'm sure that this is okay, it just needs a good thick wet coat but I'm building it up as I go, half an hour between coats now rather than the usual 15 minutes and building it up, building it up until it's nice and solid and then I'll put a big thick wet coat over at the end and just cross my fingers, that's all I can do. So far, like I said, it's not re-reacting, it's not lifting so I'm okay, I'm getting away with it but it's really wet outside, it's pouring the rain I'm keeping the temperature up at 20 degrees in here and even breathing on that is probably the wrong thing to be doing so I'm just going to get back to it, get the mask back on and just keep laying these coats up, sort of getting them thicker and thicker each time to try and just gradually kind of creep up on it <laughs> so it doesn't notice and then get that paint on there and hopefully it will set no more reaction. Wish me luck. Right, now as you can see the marks are still visible, it could be that that's just shrinking into the stuff I flattened out, it still isn't reacting and lifting up, it's just the craze marks are there. Now I'm going to put one more wet coat on now, one heavy wet coat and then I'll have to leave it, fingers crossed that when it dries and shrinks back it all smooths out, don't know. If it doesn't then I can just flat that outside down because then there's a good thick solid skin over the whole thing. I can literally just flatten that section out, scuff the rest gently, and then put one more wet coat because once it's got a thick skin on it, it shouldn't penetrate and re-react. It's only because this wet paint is touching the primer, which is what reacted. So who knows, but there we are, one wet coat to go. I was down for a full house, let's get stuck in, and that'll be it.
All right, here we are. As you can see, not a fantastically successful day, but that's the way it goes sometimes with paint. You have to rise to these challenges. I've managed to get a good heavy coat all over it now. Two wet coats on top of all those little tiny dry dust coats. So there's plenty of material on there. And as I said before, it hasn't re-reacted and lifted up. It just shows a little bit of a ripple there. So it remains to be seen how that dries, how it shrinks back and whether it is invisible when it dries or whether it still shows. And I'll make a decision what to do about it when that time comes. It may be that all I have to do is flap those little bits because it's just there and there. The rest of it's absolutely fine. It's got liquid gloss black. It looks fantastic. That will dry beautifully satin just like the swing arm. But if those two little bits still look disturbed and they still look a little bit patterned, then all I'll have to do is just sand them a little bit of 800 grit just to flatten them out and then scotch the rest and then put one, maybe two more wet coats over it in the future just to get that final perfection when it's done. I don't know what it's gonna do, so I won't know what to do next until it's dry, which is gonna be at least 48 hours. So tomorrow, I'm off to get the tires fitted to the wheels, and then after that, I can put the wheel bearings in and the discs on and at least have them ready. So there's plenty to do while that's drying. So there we are. Thank you for watching. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time. Cigarettes. Soaking up the sunshine, drinking in the moonlight, sharing good times with his friends. He can play his banjo now, lay a little fiddle down.